you with the box? Who's in the box? Oh, What's in the box? Right, so I'm gonna get started. Um, please forgive me for the little bit opening there. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest tubs. There are at least two or three, at least two that I can see of these big silvery blue gray tubs. Uh, this may be the most well packed and undisturbed one probably since 2011, 2012. That's just a guess from this item right here on this box, in the box. Um, this is Bob's Basement Toy Vlog. Uh, this is our 28th episode. I'm going to say right now, if you can see Castle Grayskull here in the side, we will be opening its contents on Masters of the Universe Day, which is April 28th, a Tuesday. And we will be having a special Alien Observed Day on the 27th, which is one day after, actually, uh, Alien Day happens, which is on Sunday this year, on the t April 26th. So we will have a special opening on, the, on Monday for Alien Day, and then we will have a special uh, Masters of the Universe opening of Castle Grayskull. Plus, we have a drawer here full of Masters of the Universe toys that have survived the Great Purge. And the Great Purge was when I discovered eBay and you could sell stuff like crazy and I was photos, scanner, the whole bit, putting out my He-Man stuff. Wish I would have kept it all. I'm really regretting it. I've actually gone back and bought stuff. But we'll talk about that on Masters of the Universe Day. So, um, real quick, am I selling the Stormtrooper helmet? <laughs> Matt, uh, you're the first person to actually... Oh, I'm sorry, Martin. You're actually the first person to ask me if I'm selling anything. I am not. Uh, this is actually my wife's Stormtrooper helmet. It's still in the box. It was just downstairs here in the basement. Um, however, mine's upstairs and I wear it from time to time. Uh, but this is actually hers. Uh, it's actually in there. It's not... We have two, so it's actually in the box. But uh, sorry, man. Got to keep it. They're not that hard to find, actually. If you look on um, uh, some of the GameStops, actually still have them. So it's it's you know if you can uh, find a GameStop online or uh, find one that'll be willing to ship it to you, um, you know that's her. Sorry, can't sell it. But thank you for asking. So today on Bob's Basement Toy Blog, we are going to be getting into this tub, which is a wide variety of things, and I'm going to start off right off the bat with two Star Trek items. So these are, and I believe these were made by Mego. Um, they definitely need a bath. And I wouldn't really know sure how to do that. But these are actually uh, Star Wars, uh, sorry, Star Trek bedtime dolls that you could take to bed with you uh, for little kids. Um, I had Captain Kirk. My brother had Mr. Spock. Um, yeah, these definitely need a bath. Uh, but they are original um, Star Trek the motion picture uh, figures. So maybe the only Star Trek motion picture figure things that I have that are original um, I didn't never got the Mego figures or any of that, the little tiny ones, but we do have these. So they definitely need to go into some sort of plastic bag, but they are definitely antiques at this point. <laughs> Martin, yes, my wife does need it. Uh, she would argue against the fact that she needs her own Stormtrooper helmet. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> That's good. Uh, moving right along, Star Trek items. Um, this is from, this was bought at KB Toy Store. This was General Chang from the Playmate series. Um, I'm just a big fan of, of uh, Christopher Plummer, who played General Chang. It's definitely one of my favorite characters in the Star Trek movies. Um, you know, awesome set. Uh, he actually comes with the big Klingon staff, like uh, Walking Cane. Very neat. Uh, could never get... I got rid of a lot of my Star Trek stuff before it. Be everybody got rid of it. So I actually had some stuff. I sold it all on eBay. But I actually kept my Jean-Luc Picard. Couldn't get rid of my Picard figure. So I think that's the most Star Trek items we've had on the show so far in a row. Um, ooh, we've got some interesting things in here. Okay, so I have been talking about a lot of our plastic bubbles. And these plastic bubbles here were made by Protopack. Um, God knows if they're still in business anymore. But Protopack, I was buying these at uh, Walmart. And they came in a giant case like this that had a whole bunch of these in there for you. So I thought that was great. But this was $8. I think I got like five or six cases. And I was like, why would I throw the case away when I can put more figures inside the case that it came in? So here we have the first release of the power of the force uh uh hans uh luke skywalker in the death star disguise here we have the atst driver spencer gift 7.99 they're a little curved 
But I think you could flatten that down. Oh, this one's, this bubble's been a little dented. Yeah. Um, I had this guy like five times over. And most people don't know that the actor that's here on the back is actually the director. I believe his name is Richard Macquin. He's actually the director of Return of the Jedi. Um, this is an awesome figure. This is Lack Savick. And this is a, a character, the Wolfman, uh, that I believe was digitally removed later from um, in the special uh, edition. But he made it, they made a figure of him. Got to have an R5-D4 in your collection. Here's a 8-D8. And as far as I can tell, I believe 8-D8, this is one of Jabba's torture guys, uh, who recently just appeared on the Clone War series. Um, I believe they just reused the original mold and made it just a little bit fancier from the original figure. And then we have the first General Lando that they released. And you can see, now these have been in heavy duty, like, you know, plastic and stuff and in storage. And look how yellow that is. It's weird how that happens. So you kind of flip flop these. I don't know if this is going to work. But we got to put these back in the thing. So I'm going to try and use this bubble for something else that's maybe a little bit more of what this should be used for. Especially, I think there's some of those. And I haven't seen him yet. I have two packs of uh, like Darth Vader versus Boba Fett or Luke Skywalker or something like that. Or IG-88 and Boba Fett. But these were great. And these were uh, really hard to find uh, back in the 90s. They, they, this wasn't an easy, you know, you just didn't click on a website and order them. You actually had to go to like hobby shops and, and try to find them. So I'm glad I got a lot of them. And I have a lot. I mean, I'd say I have 20 or 30 figures covered in them already. Um... So this is a couple of oddball things. This is a 1979 Star Wars calendar. Um, I believe there is a Chewbacca centerfold in this. Um, why I still have this, I was given this as a... I bought a lot sale of Star Wars stuff from a friend of mine. Uh, Empire Strikes Back bed sheets, calendars, posters, uh, a couple of records. Got some pretty cool artwork in there. Uh, photos from the movie. How often do you see her just standing there and not leaning over? So some different photographs. I thought, a sand person. I thought there was a, a Chewbacca centerfold in the middle of this. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe it's the last page or something. Oh, yeah. What a thing to end December on. And that's interesting. So... Yeah, okay. I was going to say, did that happen in Star Wars? Was that Empire Strikes Back? That actually, that happened in Star Wars. Woo, been down here too long. Uh, so we got a couple more. Here's the Fruit Loops box that you could get Han Solo in. I don't know why I kept it, because I obviously cut the hell out of it. Here is the 1996 Star Wars calendar. This one, this one was neat, because they... Uh, man, I'm crazy. I even kept that. They actually just gave you scenes from the movie in uh in panoramic view all right uh moving right along here so this and he's in there and i opened him too so uh this is the star wars walmart exclusive jabba's playset um so they updated everything it's a it's a great playset Walmart exclusive, and it actually comes with Ula the Dancer. So you actually get her. I don't know if this is the only way you could get her, but I had this on display because um, it was just a fabulous set, and uh, I actually got sent this uh, to review um, from Hasbro. So this was an awesome set. I don't, You don't rarely get Walmart exclusives now and, and, and those kind of items to review anymore. It's kind of sad because um, they're, they're the harder ones to get. So this is insanely heavy. This is two exclusive figures. So this was another, this was a Luke with a wet head um, inside the trash compactor. And then it also comes with a Darth Vader. I, and the Vader actually has his helmet that he comes off and just has it in the back that you can see it. Um, it looks like the glue is starting to come off here, um, but it has never been opened. So I've never played this game, but these are two very rare figures. Um, be itch and they both come with lightsabers. It's weird that Luke comes with a lightsaber and being that, but... Is there a price tag on this? I think I got this at Walmart. Oh, here we go. So here we have the Fruit Loops box. Perfectly fine. I guess I just needed the proof of purchase. 
which is right there, cut off. But there's the Fruit Loops box. Order form, I just cut off the UPC so I could mail it in. And then it had all the figures here on the side, so that was nice. It's a cool thing to have. Wow, an ET Presto Magic. <laughs> Why I have to have this, I don't know. Presto Magic. Here are, whew, here are the Star Wars uh, uh, Pepsi cans for the re-release. So this was the Vader one. Here's the Yoda one. <laughs> um, this is cool. I love this. This is the flight controller from the Action Fleet. So this actually talks. So it has a little. It has a trigger. So you hold it like this, and you put Vader's ship on top of it, and it can fire darts, and it does all kinds of cool stuff. But it talks. It has a whole bunch of sayings from the film. This is probably going to be the 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 worst day post cleanup because I have stuff everywhere at this point trying to get it all sorted. There's so much down here. It's really starting to weigh on me now and I really got to get through it. Um, there are more of those Pepsi can uh, boxes here, which is really, really funny because I think I have Diet Pepsis in there too. So here is now this is a, it, this is an interesting set. Now this is this is the Jabba the Hutt and the two headed announcer. Now the two headed announcer, Jabba, they improved Jabba a little bit. He's got a, like a rubbery, real skin feel to him. But this, I think, I think eventually they did release the two headed announcer from the pod race in Episode One. This has never been opened. Tape's still on there. But Jabba, you squeeze him and he also spits one of those little frogs to start the gong for the race. So that's a different figure. You're not going to find him too often. Um, so here is, now I've been looking, now there's a, I found a big half, a big part of these in the early on, but I didn't have the rest of them. And this is the Matrix figure from the Matrix that McFarlane Toys did. So you stick her, there's a bunch of holes here, so it's kind of hard to say which one is which. You got to kind of put the whole thing together. I guess this is the base. This may not even be hers. I might have these mixed up. So there was a Matrix, there was a Neo, and a Trinity one. And they're like in mid-motion where they're doing one of their stunts. It's a fabulous like display, but I think I have them mixed up. And there's pillars and stuff that they came with for the when they broke into the, uh, into the building to save Morpheus. So the other one is in the other room. So I think I have the, the play sets mixed up because I couldn't get Neo to, to sit on there properly either. great box and what do I have in it so this could explain why I couldn't find these guys the other day so here we have the episode one Yoda the great figure fabulous details awesome I mean this was one of the better figures uh, that Hasbro put out at this era I, I, I shouldn't say that I, there was a lot of really good alien sculpts that came out of this line um, and then here we have Queen Amidala which is weird because it should just, just say Padme, but then she, this is kind of the point in the movie where she does reveal who she is. So, there's a nice little action figure box that I just somehow found and suck, suck them in there. So, let's get through. We got. This one's, This is a tough box. This is hard to say where to start, where to stop. Where to, I'm not going to stop, but where these are going to go. It's amazing how many of these Walmart bags. But I did work at Walmart, so how many times do you buy things there? Just get, get, getting basic needs. So this is insanely heavy, actually. And this is the Outrider. So we talked about uh, the Shadows of the Empire figures. And it was interesting because this was $24.99 at KB. Um, that this is not actually in a Shadows of the Empire box. Um, the Outrider is Dash Rendar's ship, who is the expanded universe character that bridges the gap between the books and the movie and the video game. Oh, sorry, the books, the cart, the books, the comic, and the video game. And uh, very much in a B-wing style kind of ship with a mixture of the Millennium Falcon. So it's really neat because it's it's a whole vehicle to itself, and it's not really part of the film. So it, it's neat because you can add to your expanded universe 
in a fun way and have this really cool shit that a lot of people probably won't have. Um, so we are getting into the episode one tchotchkes. There's premieres episode one. Here is uh, Entertainment Weekly's The Biggest Gambles of 97. Yeah, that was a gamble to re-release Star Wars. Star Wars Galaxy Magazine Toy. It was an official guide to Star Wars toys. The sci-fi issue, the top 100 of all time. Expanded Universe. This is Star Wars Collector. These are Star Wars Galaxy magazines. They're probably all up by tops. Coloring books. I mean, I must have kept everything with the word Star Wars on it. Here is a... Uh, it's a serial thriller. Newspaper article from my hometown about Star Wars. Time Magazine with Star Wars. The rest of that newspaper from that day. Uh, and they were from May 1999. So that's when the movie re-released. So these are things that Star Wars fans have and should probably just throw away because they're absolutely worthless. Alright. So here's a big boy in this box. So this was on display so I don't know how well it is put back into the box. And by on display, I mean I had it in my room when, when I was in college. Interesting. There is a t-shirt in there. There are several t-shirts that I have not been able to find uh, since I moved uh, back in college. And I thought that my brother took them because he was a, a notorious uh, t-shirt thief. My God, I really hope that I did not put batteries. I took the batteries out of this. That sounded like something just broke. All that to get to a t-shirt. Oh, that's a pretty hideous t-shirt. So this was... I should probably put this up in my son's room. This was the Darth Vader bank. So you put, uh, you put a coin in, it plays the music, and then his arm swings and he kind of does this. Very neat. The cape is, is a light rubber plastic, so it does kind of flow. Um, an awesome just piece. They did do a Darth Maul one, I think. Um, if I can remember correctly, it's not here on the back. It just takes 3C batteries. So I may actually put that back out. Um, just a really neat piece. Um, I actually think my parents got me this as a 20-year-old as a for my birthday. They thought it was awesome. I think it's funny, and I, I mentioned that the they get, they get it for me for my birthday, um, because I think as Star Wars, as a Star Wars fan, I think we're the easiest people and the hardest people to shop for because you never know exactly what we have or what we'll actually want. Um, for me, Darth Vader usually can't go wrong. Uh, this is 1996, so I'd be 21 uh, at the time when they bought it for me, and uh, it does say impressive, most impressive, but you're not a Jedi yet. Um, he does wave the lightsaber. It's the only thing that, that they have that he says. I think he says more than that. But he does play the music. That is an awesome piece right there. And the really hideous t-shirt, which is an extra large. God, I do remember wearing this. That's my college sweatshirt. Might have been my college, uh, Penn State. Might have been my dad's. It looks pretty big for me. All right, moving right along. Um, so let's get these. Here is the Anakin Skywalker one for the Pepsi cans for episode one. Here is the Padme one. What? And here's the C-3PO one. And it also has a couple other cans on back. Hey, it's the first bit of money I found. I found a dime. Woohoo! The things you find when you clean. Okay, so, um, so I got a box here of figures. I'm gonna put them right back in, but let's see who we got. So we've got Aldi Gala. She is a Jedi. This is from like wave two of these figures. Here is the 
I believe this is the second re-release of Greedo. The first one, his head was too small. The clothes weren't right. They added the vest. Um, it's a really cool figure. I don't think he does anything. I thought maybe he did. I think there's another Greedo after him yet. So here we've got... Now, they're really starting to improve the figures of what they look like. Um, hence the re-releases of multiple figures. This is the Han Solo with the blaster pistol. That figure came out great. Here is uh, Power of the Force. This is the Jawa. And it was always a reason to re-release uh, the figures and give them these com these Comtech chips. Um, but this one's neat because you actually get the Gonk Droid. And here's the irony. They are releasing the Gonk Droid all by himself now. And he's going to be like $12.99 because he comes on a vintage style Star Wars pack. So here's a figure that I probably got for $9.99. I got a Jawa and a Gonk Droid. And this was probably 9 bucks. And now they're going to re-release the figure more screen accurate. And they're going to charge us $13 for it. Will I get it? I really like the packaging. Uh, here's This is this whole wave. This is Luke with a T-16 Skyhopper. Uh, we've got everybody here on the back now except for R2. And he may even be in here at the bottom. So here we have... Uh, this was the... Second? or This was the second Qui-Gon Jinn they released for the Phantom Menace. Just He just has a robe. That's the only difference. And then here's a Naboo uh, Royal Security Guard. I think I have some of these opened, actually, because they, they got to be really cheap. But they were they were that weird wave, too. And then here's Captain Panaka. Um, he was in wave... He was in, I think he was in wave two. He's a cool figure, though. But these, these got to be super, super cheap. And this looks like... This looks like a Star Wars box. So I may have pulled that from Walmart. I'll have to say that Walmart back in the 90s... Uh, they were very cool with, can I take the box? You know, you, you buy like three figures and like, can I take the box home with me? And they were always like, yeah, we're just going to throw it out. So I also worked at Walmart as a toy manager for a little bit, uh, which was not a fun job. And you would have thought, oh, that's perfect for me. And it was it was terrible. Um, the people I worked with were just nasty. So here's, this is the kind of box I was talking about. We've seen some of these before. These are assortment uh, boxes. So this was from... This was shipped to Spencer's Gifts. I worked there too, so that was a way to get it. It says, Description Star Wars Millennium Falcon. Yeah, I don't think the Falcon was going to fit in this box. Um, so we're definitely talking like in the 90s here. 95, 96. And I just recycled the box. So, this is going to be a bit tough. So here's Shadows of the Empire uh, Princess Leia in, in her Bausch disguise. Here is... Rune Hako from the Phantom Menace. Odie Mandrell and a droid. He was a pod racer. Dirty Battle Droid. OOM9. It's kind of like a Sergeant Battle Droid. Captain Tarples. This is a good one. $7.99 got him at Right Aid. Destroyer droid. That's an awesome figure. Really hope they make a black series of him. Um, another battle droid, but he was just white. Newt Gunray. I love that it has a sticker that says new on it. And then this is an awesome uh, Darth Maul. One of the better ones. Not as good as that three pack we saw, but with the cloak and everything. And it's funny how they release stages of him in different outfits. And then eventually you just get one mega figure that has all the pieces to it. And it's just, why didn't they just re release that figure that way that one time? So with these episode one figures, are they really worth anything? Um, always worth checking to see if there's an oddball variant. Um, and variants can be anything from the paint uh, application. Or maybe they made more of this guy than they did of this guy. I mean, they have different, they have the exact same UPCs on the back. So we've got one with some silver blasts on and we've, you know, this one's a slightly different color and it, it's just one of those things. Is one worth more than the other because there was a lower production number? And recently, I've seen, there was one figure recently that was released that had a different number here on the back than, than the, the previous release. And that one was worth more because collectors were like, oh, I need the 006, not the 007 one. So 
why that's important. I, I've lost track in my own mind why that's important. So here is another one of those big, great big cases that I got all those figures in. Eight bucks from Walmart, and I got a whole bunch of these cases. Um, these were cases with cases in them, so I kept them for this reason. So here's R2-D2 from Episode 1. Here is a Biker Scout still sealed inside his box. So we've seen a, a loose one of those already. Here we have more pod racing guys. Now, for me, in the long run, these pod racing guys and the, uh, the little pit droids, which have been now on the Mandalorian, um, those are great for world building uh, guys. So if I want to do, I have the pod racers. If I want to make a pod racing like part of my Tatooine, um, I've got those guys. I don't think they're really worth anything. And this is a neat figure, but again, not really the kind of like action figure that's going to do anything. She's like a display figure. And this is um, Queen Amidala. I do have her big starfighter, but yet to have come across it. So it could be behind me in these boxes that I've yet to get to, uh, but we shall see. And last set. Okay, we'll get into this. There we go, I'm going the wrong way with it. So here we have, so this shows you a bit of the obsession Two Star, Star Destroyer droids. There we go. And hopefully, like, you know, if, if you need guys to, like, build out your world, the Destroyer droids, they're the guys. I mean, probably why I have two. They actually made him all balled up, too, because he rolls into battle. Um, so that's kind of interesting to actually see that. And so this was interesting. Uh, Hasbro started doing this where they would re-release a figure... And then put another unusual figure in there with a pack. Um, so you could actually get Anakin as a Padawan. And I think this this was like a Walmart thing. So if you take this out of the cardboard, they're both in the slides. But this is one of those oddball things that, you know, collectors are like, oh, I really need the two-pack with the new stickers on them and stuff like that. I think they did these with a lot of other guys. But it's interesting that I actually picked them up. So I, I might have gotten them at Walmart on sale. And as I said, I did work there. So it is conceivable that I probably got some sort of discount when I bought them. So, um, big, fun, big, uh, big cool thing today that I, I'd appreciate that I really found was that I found the Outrider um, Dash Rendar ship from Shadows of the Empire. I'm glad that I have that. Um, that's an awesome world building thing. Um, I was a little excited when I thought I found... Uh, the t-shirt that was wrapped in a Darth Vader thing. I'm missing an old baseball t-shirt. I was really hoping that was it. Um, wasn't it. So, and then I, I'm trying to figure out how I would clean these without throwing them into the wash. Um, I'm sure that my mother washed them, but as you can see, these decals and stickers here, they look like they're starting to go, and I they need to be almost sponge cleaned. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to, to straighten them up, and they should probably be encased in plastic, some sort of bag anyway at this point. But I would say, all in all, not a not a bad uh, tub to go through. It's just unusual, uh, unusually packed very well. So I probably hadn't gone through it, and I think Trinity just kind of showed up uh, on top to probably make some room. But the the big find is this Clone Wars uh, Jabba the Hutt. I say Clone Wars because that's the packaging they were going with at the time. Uh, there's Captain Rex up there, but. This was definitely a great set, and I'm glad that I actually have this back in the collection again. So, thank you for tuning in. This has been Bob's Basement Toy Blog. Um, really going to have to start straightening up in here uh, because it's getting harder and harder to walk. Um, and with giant tubs like this, I can actually start making figure packs. Uh, these are figures, those are figures, these are vehicles, kind of getting things squared away. So, thank you for tuning in. I'll be back again tomorrow. That is Thursday, if I remember correctly. And we are, I'm going to have to find a box. I'm going to, I may have to go to what's behind me now. We're at that point, um, which is great because I'm getting through it. And I'm finding stuff, but I'm also at the point now where I've really got to start putting things away again, which is always sad because I just really want to open it and set it out. Um, but it's the whole point of what I'm doing. I'm taking advantage of my time. Thank you for tuning in. You have a good day. Stay safe. If you have to go outside, please wear a mask.
There's no reason to go outside unless you got to get groceries or you're helping out a loved one. Have a good day.